28. Well, as adults, we are perhaps slowly, increasingly becoming more aware of our mental health, recognising the times that we may need to stop and have a reboot. So should we be trying to do the same for kids? Um, in Utah last year, schools added mental health to the list of reasons that you could legitimately take time off school. So would you like to see the same recognition here? Clinical psychologist Natalie Powell is here to unpack that issue. And I'm joined by parents, I think, probably got opposing views on this one, but uh, we'll see as the conversation conversation uh, ramps up. Anne Hughes and Sean Saba, thank you both very much indeed for joining us this morning. Thank you. Um, Natalie, Natalie, let's take your um, professional point of view here. Um, you know, we as adults are kind of getting accustomed to the notion of being able to call into work and saying, I need a mental, a mental health day off. That doesn't always, um, you know, we don't always feel comfortable doing it. it depends where a lot of us work. Um, other, some companies embrace it completely. Others perhaps um, find it more difficult to digest, but at least it's in the conversation. What about for kids? Is it something that we should be saying um, that children should be allowed to say, you know, mum, I'm, I'm feeling really stressed. Can I have the day off today? Uh, yeah, no, I, I completely understand that for, for adults, we, we are getting much more proficient with using that kind of emotional language and having a self-awareness of, of when we're not feeling great and when we do need to take a bit of a time out. And it's great that certain employers can respect that and, and make us feel valued for that. Um, and I know it's not widespread across the country at all. However, when it comes to children, I think... Um, it, it raises a lot more difficulties rather than it just being a straightforward, mum, can I take the day off because I'm feeling stressed? When uh, the aspect that I'd be coming, um, coming at this would be in terms of brain development and the fact that a young person's brain hasn't developed, obviously, to the stage that an adult has. And through those stages of development, both primary school age, adolescence, we're learning um, about emotional recognition um, and an emotional language. So it's the adult's responsibility to help teach our children how they understand their feelings. So rather than it just being a blanket, I'm off, I want to stay off because I'm stressed, what we'd want to do is open a conversation as to maybe what's leading to that stress because they don't have the the capacity at that age group to be able to fully understand what it is that's going on for them emotionally. So rather than it being a day off from school, as it were, a mental health day, yeah. I think what should be encouraged is for adults who are involved with the child, so obviously that's parents and school staff predominantly, that's where a kid is going to spend most of its time, is the adults around the child communicating. So if a child is saying to their mum in the morning, I don't want to go in today, I feel stressed, it would be great for the parents to be able to communicate, communicate to the school and say, this is what my child is saying this morning. Can the child have some space to have a conversation about their feelings? So, maybe, so, so, so would, perhaps you're not sort of, you're, you're still encouraging this, the child to go to school, but there'd be accommodations made once, yeah. th once they get there? Absolutely. So in some schools, in some areas, um, you know, primary schools may have settings such as like nurture groups or spaces, you know, well-being areas where they can encourage a child. Maybe they need to take a little bit of time out from lessons on that particular day, but they have an opportunity to speak to a trusted adult to talk about feelings and what they understand about feelings because at the stage that they're at in their development, we have to make it age appropriate to them and where they're up to in terms of what they understand about things that make them feel sad, anxious, scared, confused, and that goes then right the way up through the high school they're still not proficient in emotional language at high school although far better but again in a high school setting we i see some schools that i work into where there are well-being support staff who won't say yeah just take the day off school but they'll encourage them to come into school and then take a bit of time out with the student during that school day to maybe you know release them of some of the demands of whatever lessons they're, they're stressed about, for example, or if it's stuff in their home life that they're stressed about, again, give them an alternative person to talk through their feelings with. OK, let's talk to uh, Anne Hughes now, who's joining us. She's, she's the mother of three who's got her own yeah. sort of unique take on it. Um, Anne, how old are your kids? So I've got quite a big gap there. I've got a five-year-old, a 12-year-old and a 16-year-old. And you have, tell us about sort of the arrangement that you have with them in terms of yeah. when they're feeling mentally health, sort of, you know, that they're feeling stressed or anxious. 
Yeah, so this is probably just for my two girls, my 12-year-old and my 16-year-old. My boy's still um, too wee for that. But I have given my girls this option for quite a few years now that they can say to me of a morning three times in the school year, I just can't face it today. And therefore, I will give them that option. Now, we're already at the end of November here, middle of November. They haven't used that this school year yet. So, right. And what I do with that then isn't about me having them to justify that to me at seven o'clock in the morning. Um, that would then be a day spent with some nice um, care, self-care. And I th- find the way that my children speak to me is if we go on a long walk and they actually just divulge everything that's going on in their lives. And sometimes I would add that kids don't actually know, they don't have the emotional maturity to know why they're upset about something. Yeah, I think that's what Natalie was saying, isn't it? Yeah, it takes a lot of unpicking with your children as to what's actually annoying them um, or what's actually upsetting them or concerning them. And sometimes it's not the first thing they even think it is, but it's giving them that space to be and that freedom to be able to say, I'm not coping today and I need to take a step back. Let's bring in our other parent who's joining us in the mm-hmm. studio. Sean Saber is a recruiter and a father of two 16-year-old boys. Is that right? And a yeah. five-year-old? Uh, and a 12-year-old as well. Oh, and a 12-year-old, just for good measure. Mm-hmm. So what's, what's your approach to this when you're, you know, if your kids, have they sort of come to you and said, I just can't face school today? Yeah, I think over the years they have. They've, you know, they've mentioned, oh, I don't really feel up to it. And there's been a number of reasons for that. Um my two older boys are doing their hires just now. They've yeah. done their national flight. So they're under a lot of stress. A lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, a lot of pressure. Um, you know, there's been times where there's been bullying issues and that type of thing over the years as well. And they've not wanted to face it. And I think, uh, you know, we've always been there to support them and talk to them. That's really, really important to get, you know, everybody's mentioning that that we're talking to today. But if I was to say, okay then guys, stay at home. I would need to take the Xbox and the wireless router with me because I know that's what they would end up spending doing. the day on. And I worry that if if we give them too much, it's a free pass for them. And as opposed from a softer skills perspective, when they grow up, when they join the working environment, they have to interact with human beings. You know, I know we have jobs, we're behind screens, we're behind our computers, but we still have to interact with human beings. And going to school gives you that foundation. And I don't think our generation realise that all our interactions at school give us a core core of that and I see that at Brightwork every day you know there's a there's a change happening I think and I don't mean everything was great and rosy yeah, when I was day, younger I don't yeah. mean that and I'm not that's not what I'm getting at I think the pressures that our children have they're always connected it's only when their mobile phone battery runs out that they're not connected that's different from my time but when we're when we're talking about the workplace you're interacting with human beings on a daily basis. It's face-to-face communication. And school's really, really important to, to take that. So that so for you, from. is it more about, is it sort of, there, do you feel there's a danger if we were to excuse a kid who's having a tough time, yeah. you know, mentally or if it's feeling stressed out? Is there is there a sense that we are robbing them of the opportunity to develop resilience? Yes, I think on so. On a tough day? I do think so. Now, don't get me wrong. Mental health is a very important issue. We recognise it far more. Right. than we ever have done before. Um, but what I would say is that um, if there's you know, a feeling of anxiety or pressure or stress, it's what we do at work. It's, you know, So you may come out of your house, have had a big blazing argument with your partner and your kids, and you put on your work face and you walk into work and then you just deal with the day. And do you want to come back in on that one? Yeah, I mean, I feel that I I do have a limit on it because it's only a certain number of days per school year that they're allowed to do that. But I think, you know, we raise children in a way that they understand um, what we're all about by what we do, not what we tell them. And some days there are days where I don't feel I can face the world. I don't want my children to always put a brave face on it because that, I believe, is how mental health issues fester, so how have they you, become have you, much bigger. Have you actually sort of shared that with them, that, you know, when you've had a mental health day off or, you know, you, you're under particular stress, is it something that you are yeah. open about with your kids? Yeah, it is something that I'm quite open. I'm in a, a slightly different situation that I had a really serious brain injury a few years ago. And so now I do get very down brain days where I have to just exit myself from life generally. Right. But um, so they're very aware of um, me taking, having, I would call it, extreme self-care, where I say, I need something different today. I need to go and spend time on my own. I need to do something different. I need to spend time with positive people. And I think if some days I was to put myself in a position where I was going to be in a stressful, negative environment, that would be very bad for my own mental health. It would be bad for my children's as well, because they are now getting a mum that's not properly plugged in. Natalie, what do you think? A of, what do you think? 
about that sort of balance between understanding that somebody is going through something and needs the space and needs to does need some kind of decompression whether that's at home or in a, in a well-being space in a school but equally uh, perhaps robbing them of the life skill of resilience to kind of power through on a tough day that you can't that you can't just sort of always always call in a, a sick day or a mental health day what's your view on that yeah, I can I completely agree with where Anne's coming from with, with that. And it's great that, you know, obviously the, the two parents that you, you have on your show this morning, they're clearly very receptive to their children's emotional needs, which is fantastic. And I, I guess sometimes not all parents are that respect, receptive and attuned to their, their children's needs. So I think it would be a better balance, perhaps, to acknowledge that, acknowledge that we don't always feel great 100% of the time. We are going to have days that are more of a struggle than others yeah. but keeping that communication between parents and school so again in Anne's situation when she's explained that when her daughters are struggling rather than it being okay you, you take time off from school today encouraging that balance and, challenging, where, and that and, conversation and getting, the, getting them into school to have a similar conversation where they can take time out in school to do that thank you Natalie very much indeed for joining us Natalie Powell clinical psychologist Anne Hughes and Shan Shabba are parents with their points of view thanks all for that great conversation Conversation. On digital radio, FM, medium wave, and BBC Sounds. BBC Radio Scotland.